Hi guys, Johnny. So today I thought we were going to take a look at the thruster velocities file. So let's just start. This, uh, this setup was posted in the Facebook and uh, I just created a, a simple sine wave animation on this engine to kind of have this uh, oscillating movement. It's just easier to show what this, uh, the rest of this stuff is doing. So the first thing we want to do here is, uh, oh my God, can you just center yourself? So I want to have a, um, I just want to steal like a point here and I want to have a point with, uh, with the direction. So what I did, what I did here was I, I just blasted everything but this little, um, where are you? Oh, here you go. They just blasted everything but this thing. And uh, it's going to have a normal. In this case, it's, it's in the wrong direction and I have no clue. Oh, that's fine. So let's do this. Yeah. So first, let's just clean this up. So I have a single. So I have a, a, a single polygon. I'm using the divide, the divide soap, and I just remove shared edges. Just want to have this uh, primitive, and we want to have this normal. And I want to have the point normal. I don't have that here. I only have the the primitive normal. So when I create a normal and you set that to points that's going to be that's going to give me it's just going to calculate the point normals from that single polygon now let's turn that around the attribute normal times minus one that's it's just going to flip it you could actually use uh, like uh, the, the reverse sop to do this because it's just going to change the, the direction of the curve which means you also change the, the direction of the primitive normal and, and these will follow. So, but then in this case, I just, you know, just simple to, to uh, take the normal time from. The next step is um, to collapse this into one single point. And uh, first off, you just scale it. And I use the, the pivot transformation and the CX, e, y, C, Z means I'm going to scale this to its centroid. And uh, that's going to give me a lot of points in one spot. So I'm just going to fuse them. So I fuse the points. I keep the unused points, but I don't up, uh, update the point normal. Because if I update, let me do it like this. Uh, there's a normal. So now I have, uh, I have one point and I have the normal. If I update the point normal, it's just going to take the normal away. But we're just after the direction of this normal. Now we have a point that is let's just show this thing so this is just always going to follow the animation and it, and it's always going to point uh, the direction of this uh, engine so the next step we want to do is we want to have this thing on the surface and i just created like you know like a, a grid for this and what i do is i just tell this thing uh, i'm going to project race by the normal i'm going to transform points and uh, as the grid is piped into the second and the point into the first, it's just going to do that. It's going to move the point using the vector to the surface. And it's going to do that in line with the vector. So this thing, oh, let me zoom out again here. So this thing, It's always going to be on the ground and it's always going to be in line with our engine so let's jump to the next step here what I want to do now is I'm going to copy a circle to this point and uh, I'm going to ray this down from that position. That is going to give me a distorted circle. It's because it's going to ray, uh, ray down to the, it's going to skew itself. So when it's, when it's underneath, it's going to be round. But the, the further away it comes from this, the angle here, it's going to elongate, which uh, is going to be helpful. 
now we have kind of a hit area from the from the blast. Now we're gonna scatter points. And these points are gonna inherit the normals from this circle. And this circle was aligned with this line. So, so this this is still gonna be a, a giving a direction. It's gonna be a, a direction that is kind of like downwards, but it's it's still gonna be a direction in 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 this in this direction as well. So what I'm going to do now is, so I'm going to use this attribute rental to start kind of calculating these uh, velocities, these directions on each point, which which I'm going to use to drive the smoke. And um, I think this is one of the things that kind of throws people off in Houdini is kind of this idea that. Oh, what kind of attribute do I use to do this or that? Well, you can just make shit up as you go along. I mean, if you know what kind of data you have and what kind of data you need, then you just have to figure out how to get from like one from one point to the other, so to speak, from one data set to the data set you need. And and this is kind of why I, why I needed all this stuff. I want the distance and, and uh, have the elongation is going to do some stuff for, for when I calculate here. So everything I've done up to this point is kind of accumulated stuff I now can use to create these velocities. The first thing I do is I'm going to zero out the, the normals. So if I just create a just a wrangle here and uh, I'm going to take the... I'm just going to take these. So if I zero out the, the normal in Y and times equals, oh, sorry, the dot Y times equals zero, it's, it's going to do, it's going to do this. This is going to be up and down. So when I zero out the vector in Y, it's just going to flatten it to the surface. And now I have the direction. So, so this is always going to be kind of the blast direction uh, from from this thing but it's not going to give me like strength and in reality when this uh, kind of blast hits the ground it, it's going to create like an outside force i mean it's just not only going to generate force in this direction it is going to generate force in all directions because it's going to kind of collide with stuff and going to have turbulence and, and and a lot of stuff so we are going to fake these kind of forces that would happen let's see how we can do that first I'm going to create the variables so these are like a temporary uh, attributes which I use inside this wrangle and um, the center that is going to be uh, the position of point zero from the third input because of course we're going to count zero one two in Houdini. The first thing, the center point, and that is going to be the center from uh, the engine up here. And then I'm going to have the same thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, the center. Yeah, that's going to be the center point. Uh, so the second input, that is going to be uh, the center point of uh, the hit down here. And the engine center point, that's going to be the nozzle from uh, input two. So that is piped in here. So that is the first thing. It's the two positions we want to have. Now we're going to generate, we're going to have direction, and th this is going to be these, right? So this is, is that's that, that's just the normal, which I, I zeroed out in, in Y's. So, but I want to have kind of more interesting. So I'm going to multiply this by a random number between uh, 0 and 1, and I'm going to add a half. So it's going to be from a half to 1.5. But I'm going to do this every frame and for every point number. So this is just going to give me like chaos in, in regard to, to these forces. But this is going to shape. It's going to jump down here. I'm going to show you. If you just watch the scatter, and we can take away the, the, the normals. That is going to change like positions every uh, frame. And this is also what, what I'm going to use later on to birth the smoke. So this is just going to like 
pipe in all kinds of randomness and for every time step you're gonna have like a new vector with a new it's gonna emit smoke from a, a new position with a new force in kind of you know halfway the right direction and just gonna create a lot of chaos which which you want when you create a force like this because you have like a blast that is hitting the ground with like rocks and kind of nukes and crannies and stuff and it's just gonna you just want to create the chaos so this I'm going to create chaos just for these directions. So the next step is I want to have it kind of change depending on if it is like away or if it's just underneath. When it's just underneath, it's going to be more powerful. And when it kind of strays away, it is, it's, it's going to lessen in force, especially in, in, in this direction. What we do here, we, we just fit the distance the, the, there is this distance here and this is actually redundant because i calculated that before and i put it on the points I, i'm actually doing this a second time and uh these values 1.9 uh, and uh, 265 these are the i had to check this like this is like uh, 1.9 and this is when it's the furthest away that's 265 and i turned that around so when i use that as, as a multiplier down here it is going to multiply with three when it's just underneath and it's going to multiply by one when it's the furthest away the next thing i want to do is i want to have an outwards vector and that is just going to calculate a direction from that center point which i ray down to the scatter and that is just going to give me vectors in all directions so now i have the directions in this direction or whatever direction this is kind of pointing and I have directions in all directions and this is the stuff I kind of calculated like to, to, to this point and now you want to have these as velocities because this is the stuff we're going to pipe into the fluid source and this is also what we're going to use inside the simulation to kind of you know look up the um, the point velocities for just giving it even more force continuously so um what are we gonna do we are gonna take the direction which is uh, this vector and the outwards which is in all directions or outwards from the center and we're gonna add them together and then we're just going to multiply them by like a random number per frame, creating even more randomness. And I have an extra um, seed number up here. When, it, when you do like if you if you do the same noise on top of the same noise, you're going to have weird artifacting and stuff. So um, here I'm just uh, I, I'm, I created chaos and I'll just like add even more chaos. And then I'm going to multiply this by the dist, which is. Uh, which is the distance again so I'm overall gonna have less of, of, uh, of a power when it's like away and the most when it's under and then I'm just gonna have a random like one of these just because I want to have that kind of control and, and finally I, I just pipe this the velocity into the normal and the reason I do this is because it's just easier to look at in Houdini you have this weird kind of it's 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 it, it it's it's like a normal but from the other direction because it's uh, like this is where the force come from but i don't know it's just it's just easier to kind of see how everything how everything is how everything works yeah so this is what i'm going to use in the fluid source and let's not do that let's yeah here you go and uh it's going to be kind of hard to see so let's just Let's just uh, dark. That's easy to see. So for each frame, it's going to calculate uh, from from new points in the scatter, and it's going to stamp points. And as you see, I made this really, really faded out. So sample distance. I just pull that way down, and and the feather, and just I just want to have really. A small amount in the source here and then you're going to stamp the points with uh, the velocity so uh, oh that's just not helpful in this case in even in the um, in the source 
when you source this in, in, in the power simulation, you're going to have the, the velocities already in these smoke voxels that it's going to shoot out. And then let's do this. Uh, and when we come to the pyro, I'm just going to source this. I'm, I'm just going to source the volume. I'm going to pipe that up because I had such a, 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 a thin source. I guess you're just going to have a little uh, on that velocity. And um, mm, oh, here we go. This uh, this is the source of of um, the force of velocity. So this is gonna this is this is a field force. This is going to use every every time step. So if you have kind of like you have smoke being emitted and and shot away, but if anything kind of like comes back close to the source, it's, it's still going to be uh, affected by these velocities again. So, but but that that setup, I, I, it's just no reason to get into that. I think it's pretty obvious in the pyro how that works. But this, how to generate the velocities, that is something that I think more interesting for people to understand how I kind of think when I do this. So, hope you liked it.